Sexy Dexy. Dexter Lawrence is doing something that might be more impressive than any other defensive performance in the history of the NFL if he continues at this pace. I'm a retired NFL linebacker and I'm gonna talk about why him leading the NFL in sacks right now is so much more impressive than any sack leader in the history of the NFL. This guy is what's called a one technique or a zero, it's, it's a nose guard. He's a nose tackle and I always get really excited when interior defensive linemen are leading the NFL in sacks or are even close to keeping up. It's more impressive for me when an interior guy like an Aaron Donald or Warren Sapp, to take it back a little bit, are, are leading the NFL or close to leading the NFL in sacks. It's more impressive if they have 16 than an edge rusher's 20. An edge rusher, you, you go through the top sack leaders in one season of all time and it's usually always an edge rusher. And that makes sense, you know, they're really athletic and they, they have to have a lot more finesse. It's, they get in a lot more one-on-one -on -one situations. But an interior guy, there's so, much, so many more big bodies available to double and triple you. It's a lot harder, you know, and it's way more impressive because you're not expecting it. I think that's what it is about me being drawn to these huge dudes that are doing things keeping up with these big edge rushers in that in the way the game is set up they're not supposed to be having those kind of numbers and i think that's what i love about it is they're doing things um, that are rare and what dexter lawrence is doing this season is it's already the more rare than anybody's ever done it at his position i think the the closest anybody has gotten to I think a nose tackle, the most sacks a nose tackle has had in one NFL season, I think is seven and a half. Now, there's, if you go way back in football, they didn't count sacks until a certain year. So maybe some guy had more than that. But at, that game wasn't as evolved then either. There was a guy, um, last name Curley, was the only, it was 1975, the only nose tackle to ever win NFL Defensive Player of the Year. What Dexter Lawrence is doing, he's, he's already has nine sacks this season. We are not even halfway through the season yet. The most sacks that a, a nose tackle has ever had for the entire span of a season in the NFL history to this point, as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, is seven and a half. We're half, not even halfway through, he's got nine. He's leading the NFL in sacks. This is unreal. It's, I, I don't wanna say more impressive because I'm, I'm such a big Aaron Donald fan, but it's almost more impressive than what he did or Warren Sapp. Warren Sapp was not a nose tackle. A lot of people think he was a nose guard. He was a three technique. A three technique, what that means is you line up on the outside shade of the guard, the guard's shoulder. So you're further out, you can get in more one-on-one -on -one matchups. A nose tackle um, is gonna be lined up in a one tech, which is the outside shoulder of the center. So now you get the center and the guard, they're right there, they can easily double you. And, and he does line up all over the place. Dexter Lawrence does line up, you know, out in a three at times. But a lot of his sacks are coming straight up the gut, straight over uh, uh, in a center. And I've never seen a nose tackle bully centers the way that he does in interior offensive linemen. I, I was a linebacker. And when I had to blitz up the middle, hitting uh, these guards and centers, like they are, you know, 340 pounds sometimes. They, they feel like cement when you hit them. And the way he's throwing them around like they're children, <laughs> it's so fun to watch. And this man is six foot four, 340 pounds. And the finesse, so he has that bully power, right? But he also has finesse. He has an amazing swim move. He has the ability to use his long arms. He can get skinny and turn his hips while gaining momentum up the field. But what's, let me also preface this by saying nose tackles, nose guards, are mostly run stuffers. They're brought in, they're not really expected to even get sacks. They might luck into one to three sacks per season. But you'll see some of those guys get paid many, many tens of millions of dollars a year and, and they don't even hardly get any sacks. And they're meant to clog up the middle and really disrupt the, the run game and take up blockers and still be able to push it forward. And, and that really stifles an offensive run game. Um, and so the fact that he is that big and moving that way, um, it, it's, it's unreal to me. Aaron Donald did things at the three technique position that you've never seen before. And I also loved Aaron Donald too, because he's undersized. He's wildly undersized for a three tech. He was, I think six foot or six foot one, 280 pounds, maybe soaking wet, 
but he was a jacked, like he had to work really hard to be that jacked 280 pounds. And I think during their Super Bowl run, he got down to like 257 because he had an injury and it's hard to keep up with calories. When you're that pushing your genetic potential, you know, it's the, the weight flies off. So it's amazing what he did. Aaron was also like a 46840 guy and he had all the finesse and the movement but to see that in a nose tackle not that he moves as well as Aaron does but it's kind of more impressive for somebody that's 60 pounds heavier um i don't know how much more i could gas the dude up other than he plays with an effort that you don't see with guys that big oftentimes guys that big Think about how hard it is for their heart and their body to carry out the blood and oxygen through that huge body. They get way more tired. Most of the time you look at them in the huddle and they look like, and they're making like a struggle face. And they'll just look like they're hurting because they are, because it is a lot harder for them. They're way bigger. Their body is struggling. And he not only plays with an effort, he gets into a lot of effort sacks too. He gets doubled and triple teamed and he finds a way to run down the quarterback. The fact that he has the speed to do it is amazing. The fact that he has the the intensity and the effort to push through being that big when he should be way more tired is is equally amazing. And you also know you rarely see a, a nose tackle that talks as much smack as he does too, which says a lot about his conditioning. Not a lot of guys, uh, especially nose tackles, are going to talk smack in between plays because they're too damn tired. They're just huffing and puffing, hoping they can get enough air before the next play and their body's screaming. Um, this is crazy, man. This is so that we're what we're witnessing right now so far with the season that he's having is is something that fans don't realize has never even come close to happening before in the NFL. This is unreal. Most times nose tackles some of the best nose tackles that Will Fork, you know, from Houston. Remember he looked like he was like 400 pounds. Um Vita Vea, um Casey Hampton. Here's a fun stat. Casey Hampton it was highly paid, one of the best uh, nose guards of all time. Um, he had nine sacks his entire career. We're not even halfway through the season. Dexter Lawrence has nine sacks. If that doesn't say how crazy and rare this is, I don't know what will. The guy is ascending. He's playing the best football he ever has, and he's only I think he's only 26 or 27 years old. I mean, he's going to reset the market at least twice again in his career uh, as far as contracts for, for his position and pay. Um, nobody holds a candle to him at that position in the NFL. One more point to make. Forgot to tell you this. Okay. <laughs> he, so a reason why him being such a great pass rusher and doing it from the nose guard position is so impressive and so disruptive to an offense is because... He's able to literally rush right up the middle, bully them all the way through, still get sacks. But what that does is it, the guys that aren't actually mobile dual threat quarterbacks that are is because they have a great feel for the pocket, like a, like a Drew Brees or something. Um, and, and so they can step up in the middle. You know, if some people are closing on, they can step up, find the groove, you know, take a couple steps and throw it downfield or get out of the pocket or whatever. You cannot step up the field. He's, he's taken two or three guys with him clogging everything up. There's nowhere to go. And then what that does is then opens up a lot of one-on-ones on the outside for the defensive ends so they can get off. And then the quarterback is either going to get buried by him or, or the outside rush guys. Let's talk about this below. Uh, this is uh, unreal. Am I off to say that the, this is, if he stays at this pace, this is the most impressive defensive player NFL season of all time? Let me know.